Well, these rocks below us, they look, uh, they look like quartzites. Yes, yeah, the whole of this hillside is a dip slope of quartzite that is sloping down towards us, towards the road. And then the remainder of the Cambrian and Ordovician succession is exposed in these crags that we're walking along. And at the top, we have the light-coloured, creamy-coloured material, which is the Durness limestone. OK, so um, that means we're walking up the Canberra Ordovician succession. Yes. And uh, we wait and see what happens next. And this looks like something completely different from what we've seen so far. Well, we've certainly got two very obviously different coloured rocks. Below, we have the creamy white material of the, the Durness limestone. And then above it, a much darker grey coloured rock. And the contact between the two is an extremely sharp, almost knife edge line that we can trace along through the crags there. So what do you reckon to this material above? Well, it's, uh, it's certainly grey. It, 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 it looks rather like the moines that so we've seen before. It is the moines. These are moines above and Durness limestone below. So we've got the classic older over younger relationship of a thrust fault. And what we're looking at is the Moyne thrust. The Moyne thrust being the thrust that brings Moyne rocks over the top of younger. And the line that we've got here, this very sharp contact line, that suggests that the movement on that plane was frictional sliding. We had a, a brittle phase of movement. Well, with, with such a brittle movement, um, you might expect there to be uh, some sort of deformation going on in the rocks uh, immediately underneath it. You certainly would. You'd expect those rocks below to be brecciated, and these certainly are. All of this fracturing, the slight changes in colours that we see, all that's indicative of brecciation of this limestone material below the thrust plane. Let's walk along and follow this contact for a little way and see what other features we can find as we go along it. Well, what we can see here, a bit more clearly because this water has conveniently washed it a bit for us, is some of the structure within the, the Moyne rocks. And we can see, in fact, that there is a lot of structure there to be seen. And we can see that there is a strong planar fabric to these rocks. If we look carefully, we can see that the grains, the individual quartz grains within these Moyne rocks, have been stretched out dramatically. And we have these really long, elongate ribbon grains. And I think even at the outcrop scale, we'd be justified in calling these myelinites. So we've got good evidence here that these rocks, during their passage along the thrust plane, have not only been affected by brittle frictional sliding. There must also have been a period of time when their deformation was much more ductile, when the grains were able to streak out and produce these myelinites. Well, presumably the, the ductile features were imposed earlier when the rocks were deeper and hotter in the Earth's crusts, and then the brittle features that uh, we've seen here and at the last outcrop, they were, they were superimposed on these early ductile features. Yes, we're seeing some elements of the history of the movement on this, this major thrust plane, because these rocks had to have been at a higher temperature in order to deform in this way, to give rise to the myelinites. But later in the evolution of that, of that Moyne thrust, when the rocks were nearer to the surface, towards the end of their carriage on the, on the thrust, they were deforming by brittle fracturing processes. And they were finally emplaced here on top of these limestones by frictional sliding. But that is just one last element in a much longer story of getting them displaced tens of kilometres from over in the east.